Okay, so I'm Harry Campbell, Biofeedback Resources International, and uh, the webinar topic for today is using low-cost biofeedback tools. Going to just go through some of the um, low-cost biofeedback tools that are available, talk a little bit about biofeedback, um, and um, then we'll see if there are any questions and talk about uh, future um, webinars that we might be doing. You should be seeing that um, first slide there. And so we'll just talk about what we're going to cover. Um, we'll talk a little bit about what biofeedback mm -hmm. is. We'll talk about uh, these things. Um, hopefully, uh, it'll just be a quick review for people who are already familiar with biofeedback. Uh, a little bit about stress. Um, why we might use some of these types of tools, and, and uh, we'll talk about some specific tools. So biofeedback, uh, this is sort of our technical definition of uh, what biofeedback is. Um, and usually I just say that we're using instruments to measure how the body responds to stress, and we feedback that information in a way that uh, people can learn um, some level of control over. Some of the things that biofeedback is used for, you can see here everything from migraines to anxiety, pain, uh, even things like incontinence um, and uh, infertility, um, stress-related infertility uh, specifically. And then you have uh, things like ADHD and applications like uh, pregnancy, labor, and delivery, um, hypertension, sleep issues, asthma. These are all things that we might use biofeedback for. And we talk about biofeedback instrumentation. We have two broad types of biofeedback. We have what we would call peripheral biofeedback and neurofeedback. So with peripheral biofeedback, you think of more of the body. So physical tension in the muscles, uh, skin temperature, skin conductance, which is related to sweat activity, heart rate and heart rate variability, and then we have respiration. And um, I will also uh, share the slides with you um, so that if you are feverish really <laughs> trying to get everything down, um, you, you know, uh, feel free to take notes, but I, I will share the slides with you so that um, you don't miss anything. Um, and so then we have respiration as well. Then when we look at neurofeedback, we think of the brain. So this is where we're measuring activity from the brain. Mostly people think about EEG or brainwave activity. That's electrical activity that's measured from the uh, brain. And then we have something called HEG, which is hemoencephalography, which is related to changes in temperature um, that are affected by blood flow in the brain. And when the, uh, there's more activation, it changes the amount of um, uh, blood flow, which will also change the, the uh, temperature. Um, so this is a little bit of a plug uh, by a uh, book, what, is, what Stress Can Do, uh, talks about stress. Um, and it's something that I put out because I wanted to have uh, a, just sort of a simple, um, plain English way that people could uh, see, learn about stress without having to um, get into too much of the heavy terminology that sometimes is used in some of the textbooks. So I, I tried to make it relatively um, simple uh, so that people can learn a little bit about stress and how important it is to um, know about and to do something about. So here you have the Hans Selye, um, definition of stress and nonspecific response of the body to any demand or change. It can also be defined as misplaced effort um, and uh, caused by unwanted arousal of the sympathetic branch of the nervous system. We think of fight or flight, uh, how the body responds, uh, where there might be a, a need for a physical reaction and many cases, there isn't really a need for a physical reaction. So um, the, the body tends to respond in the same way 
Um, and sometimes that's not appropriate or, or helpful. So we'll look at some of the responses we might have to, to stress. And you can see on the top there, you have some of the sort of chemical reactions that you might have. Um, and then on the bottom, you have more of the kind of physical reactions that you might have um, to, to stress. And usually people, once they, when they look at this list, especially the list on the bottom, they might think of some of those things that they have experienced. Uh, maybe if they had to speak in public or um, if they were in an argument or a, a, a stressful meeting or something, and they, they might think, yes, you know, they had, they were sweating or they uh, felt uh, discomfort in their stomach or, and, or clenching of their jaw and so on. And these are some of the negative effects that um, stress might cause. So you think of uh, things like uh, lowered attention, distraction, anger, um, et cetera, problems in relationships, uh, even in performance. Um, that could be athletic performance, it could be uh, academic performance, et cetera. So with peripheral biofeedback, we're, we're looking at um, things like reducing the negative effects of stress, reducing things like muscle tension, uh, increasing balance, and uh, reducing emotional reactivity. And we do this with biofeedback. The modalities that I talked about were, are used in, in, uh, in clinic uh, for with, with uh, those types of issues. And these are some of the reasons we might want to use low cost biofeedback tools um, to be able to work in groups. Often the, the system that you might use a professional system in, in an office, a uh, professional office for biofeedback, uh, you can only use it on one person at a time usually. And if you're working with groups of people, there might be situations where you might want to give some biofeedback uh, to the group and it, it's an easier way to do it and, and also of course more cost effective uh, to give people homework and say if they are coming into the office and you're working on your clinical system with them but you want them to go home and, and do some practice um, of course you can have them do homework that doesn't require equipment but in many cases it can uh, have added benefit to have them uh, practice with an instrument at home of some type. And then uh, it, it gives the physiological evidence for um, non-biofeedback clients. So you may be working with clients that you're not using biofeedback with, but you just want them to experience seeing the, the effects uh, of stress or relaxation uh, in a measurable way um, to add to the, the other work that you're doing with them. And then if we think about the, the use of biofeedback by non-licensed people, because biofeedback, at least the, the much of the professional biofeedback equipment is regulated by the FDA. So or often on the professional instruments, if you look at the label on the bottom of it, it may say that it's, it's uh, limited to uh, sale to um, licensed professionals, or, or, or by prescription to um, people uh, that are going to be using it at home that are not professional. So um, there's some limitations as to who can use, buy, and use the professional equipment. Some of the lower cost instruments are not considered um, the class two uh, medical devices, so they would be able to be used uh, by uh, non professionals. And you can use uh, biofeedback instruments for um, non-diagnosed applications for relaxation and for educational purposes um, and um, helping to improve focus and things like that. Um, if, if a person is not licensed, uh, so they might be a, a trainer or they might be a coach that, um, that would want to teach people uh, about regulation uh, and um, some of the lower cost tools are, are not, don't have the same regulations, uh, so they would be able to use them. 
and then you you get to uh, the the cost uh, of it. So professional equipment tends to be in, in, relatively expensive. So you think about it, the range of two to to uh, fifteen thousand dollars for professional systems, uh, and this would be for both biofeedback and neurofeedback. Some of the neurofeedback equipment, especially ones that do uh, brain mapping, that would be about twenty channels. Uh, so those are going to be on the higher end. Whereas the lower end, the 2000 range would be for systems that are anywhere between two and maybe five channels um, that, that either do uh, the peripheral modalities or neurofeedback or a combination of them. And so you're able to get in to be able to do anything at a, at a lower starting cost with, with some of the, um, the lower cost instruments. And uh, you can also work with more than one person because you can afford to have multiple units. So now we're gonna get into talking about some of the devices that are available. So uh, the first one we'll talk about is the MyoTrack, which is a, uh, a single channel EMG device, uh, runs about $600. Um, it, it does one channel. Um, it um, will measure muscle activity, uh, using a, uh, a sensor, like we, we would have like a disposable sensor that goes on the skin, it snaps into the amplifier, and then it connects to the instrument. This is what the instrument looks like. It's uh, pretty small, it has a clip on it, so we can clip that on a belt or uh, sometimes on a collar, and a person can uh, do training with it uh, there. So it's pretty sensitive, it's very simple. It has a, a light bar that indicates the, the changes in um, the, the readings, whether the tension is going up or down. Um, and it also has sound. So the sound can uh, be set so that it's continuous where you, you get a higher pitch when the tension is increasing and a lower pitch when the, when the tension is decreasing. Uh, you can also have a threshold or a goal so that when the muscle activity goes above a certain level, the sound turns on and then it turns off when they go below that level. Uh, so that's uh, an example of a, um, an EMG device that, that can be used. And this is, doesn't require a computer or anything, it's just self-contained. Um, and that can be something that a person can either uh, rent or borrow uh, and, and use at home, or if you are working in the office, it's a, a, a way to work with someone without uh, necessarily having to, to use your uh, computer or, or a more expensive uh, system. And then you have, um, this is showing some of the uh, devices that are available for skin conductance. Um, this, is the, the, this is one that's been around for a long time, made by Thought Technology. It's a GSR-2. Um, the one on the left side, you just put your two fingers on the, the plates and it makes a sound that goes higher pitch when there's more sweat, lower pitch when there's less sweat, and then it'll turn off at a certain level. Um, there's a add-on for it that will also allow you to do temperature and gives you an analog meter. Um, and that's the, the picture on the, on the right side there. Uh, this is just a little bit closer up. So these are the uh, plates on the top where you put your, um, let me just point to this, uh, where you put your fingers, it comes with the earpiece. This dial would allow you to set your, your scale or, or your uh, threshold for the sound. And then, uh, so that's one device that uh, that's available for skin conductance. This is another device that is available for skin conductance. This one, um, the device itself is just this part uh, and these finger electrodes that plugs into a, a phone. So that'll plug into a smartphone or a tablet. Uh, it has an app that uh, it gets downloaded and, and so you can see your signal here. Um, these uh, are, are fairly popular. Um, and because you know people like to use things with their phone or tablet and it uh, gives you pretty good feedback you can save the sessions and email data so if you had someone working with something like that you can have them working let's say between if you're seeing them weekly you might have them work with it between sessions and then you could review the work that they did 
uh, or they could even be emailing it to you uh, in between sessions so you can see what their progress is. And so they're not just getting um, feedback when they're in the office with you. And then there's another model similar from the same company uh, that does skin temperature. Uh, so it works pretty much the same way, just that it's measuring temperature. So these are individual devices. Um, in this case, it's not one device that'll do EMG temperature, skin conductance, respiration, heart rate. Usually that's only available in the more uh, expensive uh, professional devices. The, the uh, lower cost devices tend to be ones that um, will just measure one or, or two things. Um, let's see, and then this is a uh, another device. This is the um, SC911. It doesn't have like a computer connection or connection to a smartphone or anything, but it's only $25. And it's, it just, uh, it's, just looks like this. It has a wire that you would uh, tape the sensor on the end to the person's finger and they just see their temperature to a tenth of a degree, which is enough for biofeedback purposes. As long as we're getting a tenth of a degree, it's it's uh, useful for biofeedback. Because if you only had full degrees, then it's not it's just not sensitive enough to see the small changes uh, to use for biofeedback. But because it does have a tenth of a degree, it's fine for it. Um, they are slower in terms of the updates than a clinical grade uh, temperature biofeedback instrument would be, but they, they are useful and, and especially for the, for the price, they um, are often used in, in groups. Uh, some of the clients that I have work at, at hospitals and so on, so they might run groups and they might order like 10 of them at a time so that they can have uh, each person in the group uh, start with their beginning temperature, and then they might take them through a guided relaxation and record the temperature at the end. And they that's one thing that they might be able to see is that by going through the relaxation exercise, their hand temperature may have increased uh, by X number of degrees. And so it's an indication that the relaxation exercise actually um, was uh, effective for them. And this just tells a little bit more about this device. Um, you can set it for Fahrenheit or Celsius. It uses just a, one of those uh, sort of um, flat disk style batteries. And um, often, you know, when you're not using it, you just sit it on a desk and you can see what your room temperature is. In, in terms of temperature, that's another thing that's important is when we're doing temperature training, we do want the room not to be too hot or too cold. If the room is colder than 74 degrees, it can affect the uh, person's ability to, to warm their hands. So that's something that's uh, important. And if you've got it sitting on the desk, you already know what the room temperature is before you start. So, so that can be helpful. Um, now, this is something that I, I would sort of question a little bit, you know, they, they've got, the these levels here and saying you know that uh if your hand temperature is certain you know the uh level it's high tension slight tension so on you know these are just giving you an idea i, I wouldn't say they're exact at all and 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 of course there are other things that can be affecting your your hand temperature um so you you want to you know not have people rely too heavily on, on these um, levels specifically. Um, and I on my YouTube channel, I do have some demonstrations of, of some of these devices. Uh, so if you go on the, uh, if you go on YouTube and, and just uh, do a search for biofeedback resources international, you should um, uh, bring up our, our channel. You can also get it from the biofeedbackinternational.com um, homepage. So if you go to the website, uh, biofeedbackinternational.com, there's a, a, a button for YouTube and you can click on that and you can see um, some of the demonstrations for some of these devices. And there, there's one um, for the SC911 temperature there. 
Then you have um, uh, noise again here. Let's see. Okay. I can't mute it yet because it's not connected. Um, all right. So this is a basic stress card. Um, they're, again, not super accurate, but they change color based on hand temperature. So you hold your thumb on that black square for about 15 seconds. And then when you move your thumb, you see what color it is. If the hands are cold, it'll either stay black or it might turn red. The warmer the hands are, you might get green or blue. Um, and again, based on hand temperature. Um, so a person can carry that around in their purse or their wallet and they can check their hand temperature from time to time. And uh, if, if it's red or black indicating more stress, then they can use that as a cue to do a relaxation exercise. Uh, usually the cards will have on the back a, a, a relaxation exercise that you can do uh, to try to uh, generate uh, relaxation and uh, increase the hand temperature. Uh, and I've run into people who had them in their wallet still after two years uh, that they originally got them and they, they use them uh, pretty regularly. So they, um, they could be used over and over. And also people like to, uh, if they have the, you know, are able to do the volume required, get these cards customized. So it would have their practice information. Uh, and then they hand them out to, to patients um, to practice in between sessions. But also if they're doing, uh, a lot of people will do uh, talks in their community or for different groups to generate um new clients for the practice. So when they do a talk for a group, they might give them out um, to people who attend the, the talk. And so again, it's another, it, it can double as a marketing tool and also a, um, a tool for um, monitoring hand temperature. Then we go to some of the tools for heart rate variability. So here you've got um, one of the, the companies that makes some of these is, is HeartMath. And they've got several models of, uh, of devices and they're, they're some, they do update them. So some of the, by the time somebody might be viewing this, there might be a change and there might be a new product or something that has been replaced or whatever. But uh, for now, these are, are some of the ones that are available. The M-Wave 2 is a self-contained device so you can use it without a computer and it has the lights on it here that will indicate changes in, in heart rate variability um, by the light either being red, blue, or green. Um, and it also has audio feedback, um, but it can also be connected to the computer and used with their uh, software. So it, it does help um, to have, a device in some cases that can be used by itself uh, because then if you're working with a group, let's say, or you just are handing out several of them, then you don't have to also have the person have a computer. Um, and a nice thing about this is it will save several sessions internally. And then those sessions can be downloaded to a computer once, once it is connected to a USB port so that you can see the sessions that they did um, between the time that you gave them the device and the time you got it back. Uh, so this is just talking about how it works. It's measuring uh, what they call coherence, which is an indication of the, the level of heart rate variability. And usually we're training to increase variability. And it's showing what the lights mean. Um, low coherence, medium or high. And we're usually training to increase to high coherence, which would be optimal. And there are techniques that, that are used uh, to increase, teach a person to increase heart rate variability, including uh, paced breathing and also positive imagery. And that's what a lot of the training around the heart math is, is um, connected to is, is the pace breathing and uh, positive uh, imagery. Here you have another device, the M-Wave Pro, which only works connected to the computer. So it connects to the computer 
using a um, USB connection, and then it has a uh, air clip or a finger sensor that actually monitors the signal of the heart rate. And that's all fed into the computer. You can see the type of reading that we would get here. Uh, this is one of the displays uh, that you would use. And then there's also some games that, that, uh, that it comes with. Uh, this is just going into some more detail about it. Um, here you have what the screen, the initial screen looks like. And this is uh, good because it shows what the signal tends to usually look like when the person is just breathing the way they usually do. And then when they start their paced breathing, you could see how the signal changes. And that's one of the things that's pretty powerful about heart rate variability uh, biofeedback is, is that it can show a person visually the types of changes that can happen when they shift their breathing. Um, also when they shift their emotional state, but I think for most people, it's more clear to them when they shift their breathing, how the signal changes. And, it, and it's within a few seconds, they can see it. This is what the finger sensor looks like. Um, so that just wraps around the finger. Um, and then you have an ear sensor. So either one can be used. Uh, for some people, the ear sensor is better because if you have poor circulation in your fingers, you may not get a good reading with the finger sensor. On the other hand, if you've got somebody that has 18 earrings, <laughs> then the finger sensor might be better so that they don't have to remove all those earrings. Um, and I don't know how all those holes in the ear affects heart rate, uh, being able to pick up the heart rate there anyway. So those that's why they have the options. Uh, and this is just one of those screens from the software. This is another device that will connect to a cell phone that's also made by HeartMath. It's called InterBalance. And there's a couple of different models of the InterBalance. This one connects using a cable to the um, to the phone or tablet. And then there's uh, at least one other model that um, would connect wirelessly using uh, Bluetooth technology. Um, and so, so depending on, on the type of phone or tablet you have, um, the, the, uh, one of the models might be better for you. And I think there's also a uh, demonstration of, of this one on the, on the website, on the uh, YouTube channel as well. Uh, this is uh, from a different manufacturer. Um, there's a company called um, Somatic Visions, and they make some biofeedback software and hardware. And so one of the devices they have is, is uh, called a live software, and they've got sensors for picking up heart rate. Um, on the left here, you see um, a, a ear clip sensor and then a finger sensor. This one connects through a USB port. This one is Bluetooth, and um, you've got, again, a finger sensor. Uh, this is a finger sensor. This is the ear clip sensor. So there's some options there. And then you've got uh, this one is called the uh, Evo TPS. Uh, it's made by Thought Technology. Pretty interesting little device. Um, this is what it looks like. It's pretty small, so you can see it in scale. And it this uh, band just wraps around the finger. And with this one device, you can pick up heart rate variability, skin temperature, and skin conductance. It works with a, uh, a tablet. I prefer a tablet. I think technically it could work with a phone, but uh, it's, it works better with a tablet. And there is uh, an option uh, that you can connect it to a PC by adding uh, software, the, the Biograph software that uh, is the same soft, same basic software that would work with the ProComp Infinity system uh, will also work with this. And they have special, uh, there's actually two different um, uh, suites that would work with that. One is called a de-stress suite. And that one uh, would 
work for one person. So you'd have this device and instead of using it with the tablet, you would use it on the PC. And it just has a lot more features because of the Biograph software and the computer. Um, then there's another model that um, would be working with two people. Uh, of course, you'd need two different devices and they would be screens where they're either working together or competing um, between each other for in, in how well they're able to uh, regulate their physiology. And so those are other options that, that um, are available. But this is one of the um, devices that's relatively small that does give you a few different modalities. And there's even a way to, to pick up respiration if uh, you have this on your uh, finger and you rest your hand on your, your belly as you're breathing, it will pick up the, the movement. And, and so you can get a signal for respiration from that too. So then you could add to the heart rate variability, temperature and skin conductance. You would also then be able to do respiration. Okay. And uh, so this is just giving a little bit more information about that. And as you can see, it's really small. So it's something that somebody could just even carry in their pocket. It has a little pouch that, uh, that it goes in with a zipper on it. These are a couple of other devices by that same Alive, uh, the Somatic Vision um, company that makes a Alive software. They've got two hardware models, the BioSignals HS and the BioSignals HS Plus. The first one does skin conductance uh, and heart rate. And then the, the uh, bigger model does skin conductance, heart rate, but it adds temperature and respiration. So for, for under $1,000 there, you're able to get all of those signals. It works with the PC and, and the software is, is a pretty good program that allows you to um, do most of the things that you would do with biofeedback, um, with different types of displays and some games and so on um, with that uh, model. And then you have what's called the um, uh, Wild Divine. Um, and this is a sensor the device here. Uh, and you've got a, a, ear, a ear lobe sensor that would connect to that. And it has software. Um, they've got uh, several different um, programs or, or games, you could say, uh, that uh, would work with that. And it's basically um, connecting with the changes that are happening happening with your heart rate. And so as you do the, the relaxation exercise, you can see the effects of, of uh, prog progressing in the exercise or the game uh, through how well you're doing with regulating your, your heart activity. And again, this is going to be related to uh, breathing and, and um, uh, emotional um, imagery. All right. And so those are, those are some of the devices. Um, here, I just wanted to mention, um, this is uh, Eric Pepper, and um, he did a, a book called Tech Stress. He's done many books in, in uh, biofeedback. Uh, one of the people that I've known uh, since I started uh, in biofeedback back in 1985. And uh, he's written several books and uh, taught a lot of courses on biofeedback. But th this book was pre pretty interesting book, and it, it it talks about how the technology, although it can be very helpful, uh, can be another source of, of stress for us. And talk about things like using laptops that causes us to <laughs> look down you know, and, and strain our neck or the, the tablets or our cell phones that we're constantly uh, putting our, our neck in, in bad postures with, um, some of the other things that we might do when raising our shoulders or how we have our workspace set up. And, and, and um, so those are some of the physical things that um, might be uh, problematic uh, related to stress. But then he also goes into talking about um, some of the psychological and you know, mental um, stresses that, that technology causes. And, 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 and 
think of things like the interruptions of, of thought or or just of of being in a calm state where every time you get a notification uh, on your phone, it's distracting you or disrupting disrupting your your um, thought process or or you know if you were in a relaxed state now you got to wonder what was that message do I have to look at my phone and so on so the the book goes into that but um, there's a um, you know when I I looked at the the book and I, I called and I, I if he would want to um, do an interview with me just for, you know, like 10 minutes, you know, about the book. And he said, sure. So we, we set it up and I think it ran 45 minutes or an hour <laughs> instead of 10 minutes. So it's on the YouTube channel and you, you might enjoy it. Um, and that's, you know, it, it might have touched on some things related to some of the, the, the tools that I, I, I mentioned, but it was mainly just about the idea of, of how our, our relationship with technology um, can be stressful and some of the things that we can do to, um, to break that. And, and a lot of the things that he talks about don't require any technology. So I, I just, that's a, a, a um, just a little plug for that book. Um, and that doesn't really do anything for me, but I just, I, I thought it's a, an important um, book and, and, and I, I enjoyed talking to him about it. And I think there's some useful stuff you could uh, learn from it. So that's a, another thing you could check out on the, um, the YouTube channel. So um, let's see. So I just wanted to um, just give you this offer. If you do have any interest in any of the things that we talked about there, we, we can do a, uh, a discount for attending this webinar um, for anything that you might want to order. And then if you want to set up a time to talk about what you're doing and what tools might be useful for you and how you might use them, or even if you already have some of the, the devices and you want to just talk about ways you might use them, um, I'd be happy to set up a uh, meet with you either on the phone or Zoom and, and go over some of that with you. So um, that is really the end of this presentation. This is my contact information. And if you do have any questions at this time, you, you can feel free to unmute and um, ask those questions. I'll give a couple of minutes. 